in this movie we start getting into a little more sophisticated application of bones and structures. We're going to go ahead and set up a really really basic character. This is not the rigging section. This is not how you actually create complex characters and put them together, but there are some similarities and we will also introduce you to a new tool called the parenting tool that allows you to link some more complex bone structures together. I wanted to work with a typical round head type of character, the kind you see on road signs, the ones that let you know kids are walking across the street or there's people on horseback, that kind of thing. It needs a level of precision that's difficult to get in anime. So I went ahead and created this file in Adobe Illustrator, saved it as Adobe Illustrator version 8 file, and now we're going to import that into our scene. I'll come up to File, Import. We have a whole bunch of things we'll be taking a look at later on. I'm coming right down here to Adobe Illustrator file. I'll go ahead and select that. And if you have access to the instruction files, you can go to the 05 bone section and import circle head. I'll select that. It'll think about it for a second and pop it right into our scene. Now, it's also created a new layer for us. We can see in the layers palette as we take a look over here. I'll click off of that or click layer one and it names it the name of the file. So unless there's a compelling reason to rename that, I'm not going to right now. Another reason that I wanted to import this file outside of its perfect shapes and round corners is that I also added points to it. As we learned in our first movie of this section or second movie, you need to have multiple points to make sure anime knows where to bend the geometry of your scene or the object in your scene. So I added some more points in here. Adobe Illustrator does that without changing the shape of it. If I added points here, uh, chances are they might move around a little bit and I wanted that kind of perfect look going on right here. So let's go ahead and add our bones to this. We'll create a bones layer. Come down and select that. We'll go ahead and I'll double click on this layer now to go ahead and name it something meaningful like circle head bones. With that layer named now, I'm going to go ahead and drag the circle head art layer into it so it becomes a subset. You know this other layer one, I'm going to delete that for the sake of clarification. Yes, I want to get rid of that. So now all we have is our bones layer. Within that now is our circle head art. Let's start drawing our bones. With keyboard shortcut A, I will activate the add bone tool. In all human type of forms, and actually in all animal type of forms, quadrupeds, usually the anchor bone or the one that all the others behave and obey happens to be the hip. And that's because that's where all the other parts kind of bend around. The hip is one big area that doesn't flex and can't move. All the other bones can bend around that. So I just start drawing the first bone at the hip. I'll bring it up and release. I'm going to click and drag again. This will give us our mid-back area, and I'll click and drag again. We'll get one right up here into the head. I'm going to do a shoulder bone right now. I'm going to click and drag to the elbow, and I'll click and drag out towards where the hand is. And you'll notice this, this isn't directly connected to the other bone. That's okay. I'll repeat the procedure over here. And then likewise, I'm going to do it down here for each leg, clicking and dragging and making some bones so we can get some good flexing in there. Now we get introduced to our new tool. And it's called the parenting tool. You'll find it over here. It looks like chains linking together. Remember how we had talked about inverse kinematics? This is how you get all the bones talking to each other so they behave correctly with inverse kinematics, that backward motion. Keyboard shortcut for this is the letter P for parenting. The hip bone, the main one right in the center, happens to be the parent of all the other bones. And each bone will have its own parent, except for the ones at the very end of the inverse kinematics, or IK chain. Now you'll see these strange little red arrows going everywhere, and that's because as I drew the bones, it, being anime, figured that each bone that I drew became a child of the one before it. So I've wound up with a very disconnected type of figure that won't work correctly when we start animating it, so I need to reparent the bones. I'm going to do this with a combination of keyboard shortcuts B for our select bone and the letter P, as in Papa, for our parent bone process. We'll begin with the main back here. 
I'll use a keyboard shortcut B. We'll select that bone and now I'll press the letter P and I'll click the bone right below it. I'll go back to the letter B and actually the, uh, the mid back and the head ones, those are all connected correctly. So I'll go ahead and push P and I'll connect right to that, nothing changes. But now let's change the structure of this. I'll press B again. I'm going to select this arm bone and now I'll press P. But instead of connecting it up to the head, I want it to connect to this mid back area. So I'll click over to that and the little arrow changes location. Back with the letter B for bone selection. I'll select this shoulder, go back to P and I'm going to click this bone as well. So now the shoulder bones are connected to this mid back bone. Likewise down for the legs, I'm going to go ahead and parent those to the main hip bone, the first one we drew. So I'll select that, press P and click this main bone. Now we see that's connected and then one last time, letter B back to the letter P now for parent. I'll click to the hip bone. And now we've got a good inverse kinematic setup right here. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and take a look at how we start working with this, bending it, and then adding constraints to it to make the job of animation much more easy.